This is Project Emo, my new to me 1993 Jeep Wrangler YJ. Yes, I now own a third Jeep and a second YJ. Why do I need three Jeeps, you ask? Well, to understand that, I need to take you back to the start. The start of the pandemic, that is. That's when I bought my first Jeep, a 1992 YJ that I named Sue, and over a year and a half had it converted into a replica of the original Jurassic Park movie Jeeps. I've taken Sue all over the East Coast, to shows, to Jeep events, and even overlanding adventures. That brought me to my second Jeep, my 2018 JKU Rubicon known as the Southlander. That build is specifically for overlanding. It's also my daily driver. It's still a work in progress, but it has taken me on some epic adventures so far. So why in the world would I buy another Jeep? Specifically, a 30-year-old Jeep. One of those Jeeps with square headlights, no less. Well, they say you never forget your first love. And I think that saying might also be true of your first Jeep. Don't get me wrong, I love my JKU. It rides great, it's super capable, it has air conditioning. But there's just something special, something different, something uniquely tactile about driving a classic vehicle. Something that you can't really put into words. It's the smell, it's the clutch, it's the connection between the driver and the vehicle that you just don't seem to get in any other way with a newer, more technologically advanced rig. You're probably asking yourself, but why another YJ? Why would you go specifically get another one of those square headlight Jeeps? It's true, the YJ isn't exactly the most popular of the Jeeps. Even in the Jeep community, they're sort of the black sheep, or in this case, the black Jeep of the family. When Jeep released the YJ in 1986, it was an attempt to change the image of Jeeps. The more classic CJs, the civilian Jeeps that traced their heritage back to World War II willies, had a stigma of rolling over and being unsafe by many of the automotive elite. So Jeep set out to build a safer, more family-friendly Jeep. Even the square headlights were an initial design element signifying stability over the older, rounder headlights. It was because of some of these changes, most notably the headlights, that many began referring to the YJ as the Yuppie Jeep. But despite its quirks, over the last 30 years, the YJ has developed a loyal fan base, including myself. And it's established itself as one of the most recognizable vehicles in Hollywood. From being the Jurassic Park Jeep, to MacGyver's Jeep, to the Flying Jeep and Back to the Future, and even newer shows like The Walking Dead and The 100, the YJ has been an icon in movies and TV shows since the early 90s. And yet, ironically, there's still so many people that think of it as the worst Jeep ever. But over time, the things that made the YJ weird or bad or yuppie also made it unique. So 30 years later, we have a unique vehicle that is also the first model of the now iconic Wrangler brand. As cars became more and more advanced, these older vehicles that don't require the same kind of computers and gadgetry have become sought after. You can tinker with them in your garage with basic tools, you can outfit them in almost endless ways, and you can make them truly unique. But they are becoming more and more rare. Because over the last 30 years, so many have been lost, whether to accidents, rust, neglect, the YJs are a dying breed. And because of that, the prices on them are going up, and the chances of finding one in really good condition are getting slimmer and slimmer. I get a lot of love and hate for turning my YJ into a Jurassic Park replica, but the truth is, I saved it. Most of the movie details are just cosmetic. Underneath it all, it's basically a restored stock YJ Sahara. And that brings me back to Project Emo. Sure, it's a classic, and sure it has the potential to be worth some money, but that isn't why I bought it. I think when it's all said and done, 
Driving a YJ is just more fun. It puts a smile on my face. There's just something I love about these Jeeps that can't be expressed, only felt. So yeah, it has some issues. I need to fix the seatbelts. The dash lights don't work. It has a terrible aftermarket radio with a broken volume control. I don't love the front bumper and I'm not a fan of these cheap LED lights. The engine has a tick from a leak in the manifold or head gasket or maybe both. Third gear grinds a little bit. It has whatever this is. But fixing those things, that's restoration, that's resurrection. There's purpose there. While I'm not 100% sure what I'm gonna be doing with this Jeep, you can be sure that it's gonna be better than when I found it. That's why I named it Project Emo. Not because it's black like my first girlfriend's heart, but because it's a labor of love. Because of all the conversations, heartbreaks, confessions, and tears an old Jeep Dash like this must have heard, and like the emo songs I came of age to in the 90s, it has a fixed place in my heart. So this one's for you, fellow YJ fans. This one is me saving the squares.